Psalms 95, verses 1 to 3. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into His presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to Him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. Father, we come before you today in worship, in praise, for you indeed are a great God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May your praises live in every word we speak And with every gift of breath we breathe you in All the works that you have done consume my heart Who in all the earth compares to who you are who in all the earth compares to who you are? A thousand hallelujahs, God, we lift into your name. A thousand hallelujahs, God, we lift up once again. All creation lift its voice, declare into the air. Oh, Lord. How great you are How great you are May your praises live in every word we speak And with every gift of breath we breathe you in All the works that you have done consume my heart. Oh, who in all the earth compares to who you are? Who in all the earth compares to who you are? A thousand hallelujahs, God, we lift to your name. A thousand God, we lift up once again, and all creation lift its voice, declare to the end, oh Lord, how great you are, you Colossians chapter 3, verse 
16 to 17. Let the, word, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Lord, we pray for the preaching of your word as it's spoken. Lord, we thank you that we get to worship you and we get to hear your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, as uh, today we're going to take a look at a, uh, a short scripture, the one that I read a while ago. And that short scripture is actually Paul writing a snapshot of what communal life looks like like for us Christians. Now, we always say this. As Christians, our faith is personal, but it's also communal. It's not only meant for us, but it's also meant to, sh to be shared with others, with fellow believers, and of course, with the world. So, when we say personal, let's take a look at verse 16. It says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. You know, when I think about all of you watching every morning, I am so encouraged to see all of you taking seriously the Word of God in your life. Meaning, you, we, we almost start the day with the Word of God, praising Him and also listening to His Word being preached. That is one of the ways we let the Word of God dwell in us richly. And I, and I know over and above this, you also have your own private time, devotional time with the Lord, and of course, our victory groups, which is a communal aspect of it. But still, it's a means by which the, the, the Word of God dwells in us richly. And Paul admonishes us that in our personal walk with God, we need the Word of God to be, the word dwell actually means to be at home. We need the Word of God to be at home in our hearts. I remember the time when I was still early on in my walk with God. When I would read certain parts of Scripture, it doesn't sit right with me. I realized as I read this verse today that at that time, the Word of God is not at home in my heart. It's not dwelling in it. When you say dwelling, you know, it's like when you're at home, you are comfortable, you, you could just rest. But if you're in another place, even though you are welcome in a friend's house, it's not the same as your dwelling place. In the same way, when Paul talks about let the word of Christ dwell in us richly, it is my prayer that as we grow in Him and as we continue to, to hear God's word and to read it, to have our devotional life, and even uh, listening to, to our morning worship and prayer uh, every day, it is my prayer that the Word of God, as we grow in it, would become at home in our lives. That even though the world may have different ideas, even though the world may present to us different truths, we will still stick to the Word of God. That the Word of God is richly dwelling in us. That the Word of God is at home in our hearts. That when we read it, we feel comfortable, we know that it is the right thing, we embrace it. it that is my prayer for all of us, especially in, as we have this personal walk with God. This is the aspect of personal faith. But you know, Paul does not stop that, there. He proceeds to talk about the communal aspect. Why do we have this Word of God dwell in us richly? Well, one, of course, because we want to grow in our knowledge with God. But he proceeds into saying this. In verse 16, he continues teaching and admonishing and singing psalms. So let's talk about those three things. First, teaching. So it's not just enough that the, that the Word of God is dwelling in us. Part of communal life, part of being uh, in the church is us sharing and teaching what we have learned. And I believe the reason Paul admonished the, or, or it was an imperative of Paul for the people or the saints in Colossae to teach one another is because they, he knows 
that one of the ways we get to know the truth more and more is if we ta start teaching it. Truth that we just hear is truth that is, uh, we know, uh, it's, a, it's, it's information, it's data. But when, in, when we start to teach these things, when we start to pass it on to others, this no longer becomes information. We start to study it deeper. I, I think we all would agree that there are certain subjects matters, even in school, that when we heard it from the teacher, we know about it. But when we attempted to teach it to others, particularly for parents, when you start teaching it to your children, it became, your knowledge of it became deeper. So part of really letting the word richly dwell in us, it's not just us receiving the word through the preaching, through this morning worship and prayer, through reading the Bible. Part of it is teaching it to others. And that's why it's not to far off for Paul to not just encourage us, not, not just to encourage us to have the word of Christ dwell in us richly, he proceeds into saying, teaching it. Personal to communal. And he does not stop with teaching. He says, admonishing one another. And admonishing is, means to somehow inspire to persuade, to encourage. Because sometimes, even though there's teaching, which is more or less instruction, how many of you, you have been given instruction, but you did not do it immediately? It took encouragement. It took an inspiration for you to start doing something. Many things in the Bible, we already know, but we don't necessarily do unless we are inspired and encouraged by others. See, teaching and admonishing comes together. They are a one-two punch. They walk hand in hand. And with this, we are to share insight with one another, encourage growth, and even lovingly correct one another if necessary, always guided by the wisdom of Christ. And so from that personal aspect of our faith, now we go to this communal aspect, teaching, admonishing. What a snapshot of what a church is. The last thing he says is about, is about this, about singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. You know, when I first heard this, I'm good with teaching and admonishing. But what's this about singing? And what if a person does not like to sing or anything like that? But when I look at Scripture, the whole counsel of Scripture, even from the Old Testament, singing has always been part of how God would exhort us to be exposed to His Word, to, for us to sing. And I think... The reason that is, as I look at scripture, is that there's something about singing that does not just engage our minds, but it actually engages our hearts and emotion. How many of you, you have a, a playlist when you have an emotional um, issue that you're, or an emotional turmoil that you're going through, or whether you're happy or sad? There's some, some of us have playlists because we know that songs does not just penetrate our mind, it actually goes into our hearts. And Paul understood this, and he said to the saints back then, to all of us as Christians even now, to sing, to sing the words of our Lord, so that the words of God is not just something that we receive in our minds, it's something that we feel in our hearts as well. Singing helps us receive the word of Christ um, in such a way that it's, it enriches us. That's why let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Singing is part of it. And that's why I encourage you whenever you're listening to our morning worship and prayer, <clears throat> don't just listen to the worship song. Sing it. What we do with our body matters. And so when we sing it, even on a Sunday service, it's so funny sometimes when you go to Sunday service, we just look at the worship team, thinking that it's, it's like we're an audience to a concert. But I want you to know, when we go to a worship service, we go there to participate in worship. And we should be singing those songs. We should be singing it aloud. And you know, when you, when you do that, it's something, it really contributes to enriching your your um, your as you receive God's word in your heart through singing. So the, I, 
it's, again, that's why I'm not wondering why Paul would say teaching. He doesn't stop there. He said, but to admonish. But more than that, over and to sing. All of those part of the communal life in the church. And even as you listen to this, I hope you are looking for ways to, to be in this communal life, whether that be in a small group or in a Sunday service. I encourage you to be, to be gathering with God's people face to face. And you know what the, uh, and you know what it continues to say? Doing all of this with thankfulness in your hearts to God. That every imperative, everything that we are supposed to do, I hope it's not just a um, obligation or we have no choice. Whenever there's an imperative, I hope it comes out with thankfulness that because of what Christ has done for us. All of the life we have now is because of the goodness of God in our lives. And I hope that in everything we do, even in our obedience to His words, to His word, you know, we are saying, Lord, I'm doing this and I'm grateful because I'm grateful. Not just because I have to, but because I get to, because of what you've done for me. Looking at the cross and what Christ has done for us, I believe will produce such thankfulness in our hearts. And then, as it goes to verse 17, it goes, it goes back to that personal aspect of our faith where it says, doing everything in the name of the Lord. Everything in the name of Lord. Everything must be done in the name of the Lord. Again, with thankfulness. In all of our action, both in words and in deed, we are called to bear the name of Jesus. Whether our, we are serving one another, reaching out to the community, or conducting our daily affairs, everything should reflect the character and teaching of Christ. Our lives becomes testimonies proclaiming the transformative power of the gospel to the world that is around us. So this is my prayer that we would indeed prioritize the study of the word. But this is not just for us. Again, as we go through uh, our, our life, may we have, may we not forget the communal aspect of our faith being an uh, active part of the body of Christ, His church, and being part of those who do not only receive, but also give through teaching, admonishing, and even singing with thankfulness in your heart. Again, because of what has Christ has done for us, our, it is our, just uh, our, the only recourse is to have an attitude of thankfulness and gratitude to Him. Let me just pray. Father, thank you for your word. And Lord, we worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. You are holy, strong, and mighty, everlasting God. You
as we prepare to go about our day, let me speak this word of blessing to you. May the word of Christ dwell richly within you. May you teach and admonish others in all wisdom, nurturing and guiding each other in the ways of the Lord. And may your voices rise in singing, praising with spiritual songs, with hearts overflowing with thankfulness. And as you go about whatever you're doing today, may every word spoken and every deed, deed done be carried out in the name of the Lord Jesus, reflecting His love, His truth, and His glory. God bless you.